Edith's last memory of her daughter was quite devastating, dealing with the start of the civil war that was currently going in their homeland, snatched from her mother's hands, when they were discovered hiding inside their own car, while a group of military shot everyone who they wanted to, and deliberately took civilians to form large armies. From that moment on, the state militia decided to take Caroline Edith on an exhausting tour around all the bases, over several years, and just as she finally decided to head south to look for her daughter, her train stopped in an unknown place. Following the orders of the captain, who tells her to get off at what appears to be a shelter for civilian, Edith decides to take part into the space and, taking his weapon strongly, begins to explore the shelter delimited by bars and burning garbage cans, which attracted heat for all guests. During her expedition, a kind woman approached with a cup of soup for Caroline, who, beyond wanting to feed her, sought answers from her husband, who long ago had been taken to the center to fight, and only death was heard around that zone. Edith was able to stop her and recommend that she flee south as soon as possible, before being interrupted by the lieutenant assigned to lead the new member of the military project. Despite the ignorance of what Caroline Edith was about to face, and with the constant questions of the lieutenant, she remained calm and observant throughout the journey that they both undertook within the city, or at least what was left of it, because the civil war was evident in each part of it. However, this could not go unnoticed that they were, perhaps, going to the wrong place, and although she informed his driver, the lieutenant decided to ignore it and continue on his way until parking in front of a warehouse, with the excuse to look for something. Edith nimbly got out of it, completely avoiding the cluster of homeless people who wanted to harm her and steal the military vehicle, so her best option was to re-enter it and flee from there, leaving the lieutenant behind. After crossing great distances, Caroline Edith once again accessed the base that the army had established for this war. But seeing that the vehicle was being driven by an unknown person, they began to prevent her from passing, forcing her to get down with her hands up while she holds her documentation. After she tells she's summoned by Rod, although she was without her escort, they allowed her to enter the base. After she walks into an office, she found what seemed to be a group of colleagues who will also be part of her mission, but who, like her, didn't know the cause or purpose, or at least that was the case until they entered a meeting with Colonel Rod, in a gloomy room, a central table with chairs around, and a large lamp perched on it. Rod was a rather curious militant, who together with the captain explained the theme of the meeting, an early visit of the enemy, for which his base was in danger of disappearing, and although this bad prognosis exists, there was a possibility of changing everything and even ending the war. The Black Crab operation consists of crossing the archipelago from the continent to the open sea, since it is frozen, but it does not resist vehicles nor can it be crossed by ships, so Caroline Edith and her companions are assigned to cross this cold terrain and ice skates with two capsules and take them to the Odo Research Base, with the promise of being completely free and being able to go wherever they want, and even the guarantee of winning the war, Edith, an ice skating specialist, begins to clarify that it may be an impossible plan. Although the colonel agrees, he shows her an image of her daughter, refugee in Odo, so he makes a promise to Edith, so she can meet again with Vanessa at the end of the mission. Full of doubts, fears, hopes of reunion, and forced to comply with the operation, Caroline along with the three men who made up her team, received the necessary equipment. That night, while Edith dreams with her daughter again, they were abruptly raised by the noise of the bombs falling on the base, so with the guidance of their captain, they go through the forest. Although the missiles and shots seem to go directly over them, they manage to reach the east dock to receive the capsule and start their mission, but not before noticing that the lieutenant that Edith had left abandoned in that alley had returned and would now be part of the team. However, just by reaching the old border, and after the captain delegated Edith as leader for the next five kilometers, the ice begins to give way under the weight of the team, taking her to the depths of the sea. While the rest of the operators guaranteed her safety, Caroline enters the water in search of the leader, who is carrying the mission objective in her bag. Although the time underwater seemed endless, Edith manages to recover the bag with the capsules and get back to the surface again, at the cost of leaving her captain drowned under the frozen ice. After a while, getting a little warm, they begin to skate again until they found a refuge inside an evicted house in which they can spend a few hours. As they sat around the fire, the members of the operation begin to question what to do from now on, given that their captain was not there, and she was the only one knowing the information. One of Edith's companions, a famous hockey player, suggests the lieutenant, to which Caroline totally disapproves and starts an argument between them. The member of the mission, remaining neutral in the face of these circumstances, manages to calm them down and establish that thanks to Edith's courage, they were continuing on the mission. But because he is a lieutenant, he is in command, and everyone had to follow his orders. Caroline, with a disapproving gesture, remains silent and hopes that nightfall would arrive quickly to continue. But the plans are different, because while everyone was taking rest, Edith is awakened by the noise of a helicopter that was rapidly approaching to their shelter, with the presence of one of their operators speaking through the radio, seeking contact with a third party. With the helicopter over their heads, they managed to leave the abandoned place and hide inside the forest, where they were the main spectators of a missile fired directly at what had been their refuge a few minutes ago. 
Once this enemy left the area, Caroline points her gun at the head of her partner, accusing him to be a traitor for talking on the radio. In his attempt to evade the gun, he is stopped by the famous hockey player, who this time chokes him and places a knife to his throat. While the lieutenant exclaims that he would have another chance, and this possible traitor excuses himself, they hear the sound of someone else around them. So they go down again, watching the passage of a line of militiamen, walking directly towards their refuge, which seems to be the ideal signal to return to the ice. During the nightfall, the road is tiring and exhausting, and due to the lack of light, one of the militants collides with a kind of rock and fell face first against the ice. After a few seconds, he backs away, scared, and that's where everyone realizes they are going through a territory that has become a graveyard of frozen corpses, so they must have started to move subtly between them. While resting on a frozen rock, speculating what they saw and recounting the mission, they begin to be viciously attacked by a new helicopter, which probably saw the lights of the weapons while they were going through the corpses. Unfortunately, they flee instinctively and begin to disperse, and Edith, dodging the bullets that the enemy shoots directly to her, manages to hide under what appears to be a broken dock. After a few seconds, the rest of her companions begin to gather with her, and they decide to cross the island to be unnoticed for a while, although a series of footprints reveals that they are not alone in the place. While they investigate the area, they discover that a couple of old people are the ones who inhabit the lonely island, and after they are abruptly interrupted in their home, they provide them with warmth and lodging to rest. They recount her story in the meantime, but after a fork falls to the floor, Edith looks under the table and notices a gun being pointed, which creates tension between her and the homeowner. At the least expected moment, this older man activates the gun, and the lieutenant, with the rest of the team, take cover and shoot the owners of the home. But the hockey player is wounded, and the traitorous suspect lies dead on the ground. Suddenly, through the radio, a communication enters. It's the girlfriend of Karami the traitor, who works as communications officer within the army. The lieutenant, evading the communication and without giving the news, affirms that they should take as much food as possible to march again to the mission. Malik, the hockey player, is badly injured by a bullet that entered his body, and although he refuses to receive attention from his teammates, who wanted to stop the bleeding, he takes enough morphine to dull the pain and make him a slow officer. In the middle of the ice, Edith tells him that she has found something, so he must resist a couple more kilometers to get there. With little to go, an exhausted Malik stops in the middle of the ice, and his partner assists him, while Edith and the lieutenant enter an abandoned ship to guarantee the absence of enemies in there, to use it as a refuge. After a few minutes, the remaining four are inside the place and put Malik to rest. Granvik, an introverted soldier, interrupts the conversation between Edith and the lieutenant, who mention how difficult it will be to reach the objective with Malik wounded and consider abandoning it. Although they ignore this soldier's rejection, Granvik decides to take one of the capsule and a knife, stating that he wants to see what they contain. Even having three weapons pointed at him, Granvik decides to open the capsule, showing that inside it there's a biological weapon, a highly contagious virus, so Malik approaches to take it and remembers Rod's words, the end of everything. The lieutenant takes the capsule and invites Granvik to secure the ship, while the hockey player returns to rest on the seats alone. As Edith leans out on the deck to assess the perimeter, she hears a gunshot and quickly runs inside, to find her comrades watching Malik, who decides to shoot himself and end his weight of death. The introverted soldier decides to break the silence to say that he doesn't want to go to Odo to deliver the capsule. Ignoring his comment, Edith warns that she saw lights on the ice, so with the sound of the shot, she knows that they will arrive soon. She approaches her backpack to take it, and leave quickly, while Granvik repudiates her lack of interest before the situation. Before the lieutenant could join, Caroline goes out onto the ice again, but this time completely alone, until she reaches a point where she can appreciate the sea current, and the ice is fragile enough to prevent her from advancing. She decides to continue, one step away softer and with a high probability of falling into the water. While preventing the ice on which it rests from breaking completely, what is left of her team goes to her, but this time, demanding the delivery of the capsules that were inside her backpack. She slowly manages to take them out and throw them away towards the lieutenant, deciding to continue quickly on the soft ground, tied to each other by a rope, and thus reach their objective. The ground becomes brittle again, and as Edith pulls on Granvik, a flare appears in the sky followed by a series of shots that are not aimed at them, so they decide to continue crawling until they are noticed by the enemy. The introvert, also a sniper, takes care of the situation by eliminating the only target capable of visualizing at 450 meters, so when the second flare is launched, it emits a shot. Automatically, Caroline continues her path along the ice until she reaches the island, guaranteeing the absence of enemies, as Granvik had managed to shoot the only one left alive. Giving them a safe place to recover a bit of heat, he begins rambling on about terrible anecdotes of war. By dawn, Edith awoke to the devastating scene. 
The lieutenant had abandoned them and taken the capsules with. By that time, both of them, Granvik and her, were being visited by enemy officers, so through grenades and shots, they managed to knock down most. But just as they were preparing to throw the last grenade, an opposing soldier got close enough to shoot Caroline. This alerts the grenade that was about to explode near them. They got up to flee, without noticing that Granvik jumped on it to cover her from the shock wave, and with a weapon in her hands, she began to shoot those who were still standing on top of the island. However, it was her who began to crumble from the wound, noticing that the released introvert was lying dead on the ground. After several minutes, she took her weapons and returned to the ice. She had a mission and a clear objective, find the lieutenant, recover the capsules and reunite with her daughter. After a couple of kilometers, she managed to find it, but Lieutenant Ryland ignored Edith's call, so they both decided to open fire in the middle of the territory. Her, with the sniper weapon, gets to shoot him down on the ice, and with faltering steps, she catches up with him as he drags himself. In the middle of nowhere, they begin to discuss about the capsule and the duty to destroy them for the good of humanity. Even so, Caroline, determined, turns to the lieutenant and takes the capsules from his bag, and although he continues to plead with her, she leaves with them to take it to her destination. In the middle of the desolate field, Edith begins to rave and hear the voice of her daughter Vanessa, until she begins to cross a cloudy field where she perceives a group of horses approaching her. Without strength, she kneels down and identifies with the phrase Black Crab. Remembering again the last moments with her daughter, Caroline Edith wakes up under the light of an unknown shelter, connected to a respirator and with her wounds healed, so that in the midst of her effort, she manages to get back on her feet before a strange man in a black suit approaches her, with the excuse of helping her. The nurse informs her that she is in Odo, so she constantly asks about her daughter, but after ignoring this comment, he tells her that despite her precarious health condition, they want to meet her, so she shows up uniformed and is led to a table full of militants. While being congratulated by her superior, Caroline can notice that the lieutenant is within the group of militants and exploring her surroundings. She hears the promotion received and is praised with numerous applauses. Instantly, Edith asks for her daughter's location again, mentioning that Colonel Rod told her that she would be here, but the militant mentions that without the necessary motivation, she would never have been able to accomplish the mission, regretting to inform that her daughter wasn't inside the place. Full of fury, she pounces on the woman and begins to beat her, demanding the location of her daughter, until the lieutenant manages to remove her from the admiral and stays with her, consoling the heartbreaking reality she faces. Returning totally disappointed to the care center, the nurse treats her wounds. She silently takes a scalpel and walks to the mirror to place her beret correctly on her hair, and thus approaches the lieutenant's stretcher. She begins the conversation by giving him reason regarding the destruction of the capsule, but he can only reply that it is too late to try, even though it is the only solution to save Vanessa if she is alive. However, both go inside the building to find the laboratory and start the battle for the entrance to it. Once Edith sticks the scalpel into a soldier, taking weapons, they access the confined space and manage to get one of the scientists to give them the capsule. Taking them and turning on the evacuation alarm, they go to the base heliport, and when she is about to flee in the middle of her agony, she listens to the report of having found her, noticing she is surrounded by different soldiers aiming at her. Raising her hands, she shows the grenade attached to the virus, and standing up, she tells the lieutenant not to come closer. He accesses the helicopter while looking at Edith, detonates next to the virus on a rock. Lieutenant Ryland returns to the helicopter to sit down, knowing that thanks to Caroline Edith's bravery, him, Vanessa and the entire population will have a tomorrow to live in. In her imagination, Caroline and her daughter embrace again.